today's online training session on how to quickly generate high quality ortho mosaic. My name is Simon Granet and I'm a photogrammetric workflow specialist here at Simactive. So, um, so today uh, the topic of the of the presentation will be to show you how to quickly generate uh, quality ortho mosaic. As many of you may know, uh, there's different ge geometric deformation that are um, that are occurring during the acquisition of your images. The ortho rectification is the process to correct uh, those different ge uh, geometric deformation in your images. So we will we will review those uh, those deformation and how you can um, how you can uh, correct for, from those in order to have the best quality uh, ortho mosaic possible. So today, what you will learn. So we'll st we'll start about importing different images. Uh, types and format, so how the uh, digital information is stored. We'll, start, we'll uh, also talk about the uh, ge geometric correction that needs to be applied to the raw images. Uh, we'll talk about the difference of a true ortho and a DTM-based ortho, um, using an external DEM for the ortho rectification, generating a mosaic from individual orthos. Also talk a bit about uh, the reflectance calibration uh, for uh, multispectral imagery. We'll talk about assessing the mosaic accuracy, the seam line editing, the, the radiometry, uh, the radiometric uh, adjustment that you can apply on your mosaic. Um, also, we'll talk about managing multiple sets of ortho or mosaics, uh, exporting the final mosaic, and also exporting NDVI maps and multispectral reflectance mosaic. So let's talk about uh, importing different image type and uh, format. So how does the image itself is stored? Um, so the image uh, is stored as a digital images, which is uh, basically a raster grid of cell, which the smallest unit is a pixel. So in every pixel, there's a, it's stored by a num numerical value, uh, which can be represent uh, many um, many information such so such a multiple wavelength if you have access to a multi-spectral multi imagery um the data can be stored into a different uh different bit so you can you can it can be stored uh, as a 8 bit uh, images which you're going to have a possibility of 2056 values either 16 bit which is almost 64000 or uh, if you have let's say an rgb images of uh, 8-bit band, uh, it's something that we can call a 24-bit imagery. Uh, in Correlator 3D, uh, we support uh, images up to 32 bands uh, and 32 bit per bands. So uh, mostly all the uh, storage format can be um, can be uh, imported in Correlator 3D. Also, the most common uh, format uh, that we can find for uh, imagery is the GeoTIFF format. So it's a, typically it's a TIFF imagery uh, with the geographic header which contain information about the projection system uh, and the spatial resolution of the uh, of the imagery uh, also there's other type of imagery that you can import directly in correlator 3d such as uh, as a jpeg or tiff uh, imagery uh, also we it's, it's always uh, good to have a non-compressed uh, format because it's going to be much more uh, quicker to process uh, instead of a, of a compressed TIFF image uh, of a compressed JPEG imagery. So now let's talk a bit about the different geometric correction that needs to be applied uh, when we perform the ortho rectification. Uh, so there's basically three types of uh, of deformations uh, that uh, are occurring during the acquisition of the images. So there's the deformation uh, in, uh, because of the lens. There is also one that uh, that's uh, because of the uh, acquisition angle. And also there's another uh, deformation that is related to the topography. So both of those three um, of those three uh, deformation can be uh, corrected during the ortho. Uh, the ortho rectification. So, um, first of all, the topography usually can uh, create some scale problem if you looked at any images. Um, also, the per the perspective angle uh, and uh, the perspective angle and the altitude of flight will create uh, what we call a leaning effect and relief uh, displacement of uh, of elements. Um, so uh, the um, 
error triangulation will define uh, the overall accuracy of your uh, of your mapping product. But also, when we talk about orthorectification of images, uh, the um, elevation model that will be used will also have an effect on the uh, planimetric accuracy of your uh, final uh, ortho mosaic, because uh, you want to have uh, if you have a DEM that has wrong elevation value, well, those uh, elevation values error will translate into planimetric error of your final uh, ortho, ortho mosaic. So finally, the goal of the ortho rectification here is to pass from a perspective center to an orthogonal uh, projection where we can see every pixel from, from above. Uh, so here we, we, can, uh, we can correct for different types uh, of uh, geometric correction. So we have an orthogonal projection, uh, a uniform scale because the, the, the relief, uh, the topography is corrected and there's no more uh, really relief displacement between different images. So now uh, we've talked a bit about the different uh, correction, uh, the different geometric uh, deformation that can uh, that that can happen during the acquisition. Let's let's talk about choosing between a DTM base and the true ortho uh, for the ortho uh, ortho for ortho generation. So first of all, what is the difference between those two types of ortho? Uh, so the the DTM the DTM uh, ortho is basically we only gonna correct for the terrain deformation because on your terrain surface you only gonna you only gonna find uh, what is related to the terrain topography. You won't have any buildings, cars, so you're still gonna have some leaning effect uh, on uh, elements that are not terrain related. So if you looked at the Norto photos that has been ortho rectified directly on the terrain model, you'll see uh, depending on the acquisition uh, on the uh, elevation of the acquisition, a leaning effect uh, for, let's say, buildings, cars, trees, uh, if uh, the acquisition was done quite low. The difference uh, here with a true ortho is that every element, every element is corrected uh, during the ortho, uh, the ortho rectification because we use a digital surface model. So the surface model represents everything uh, that you have on your images. So you're going to have the buildings, the trees, the cars, and all those other elements. Uh, so everything uh, will be corrected during the ortho rectification. Um, another, uh, another element is when you look at the true, uh, at the true ortho, uh, the quality of your input imagery is directly related to the quality of the ortho photos that you will get. Uh, for uh, the true ortho. Uh, sometimes when you look at a true ortho that has been done with a small sensor uh, that was flown at a low altitude where we have a lot of uh, of leaning effect, well, since we need to correct for the, the pixel displacement, sometimes it can be hard to have a really good, uh, a really good output for, um, for a true ortho. It's not a matter of a software, uh, a software processing. It's more of a matter of the uh, geometric correction that needs to be applied uh, onto the uh, input imagery. So uh, another element that can be uh, processed uh, in correlator 3D is basically uh, you can exp you can import um, an external DM for ortho rectification. So um, so sometimes a lot of uh, a lot of people will fly lidar, let's say, with their uh, with their um, uh, input imagery, and they can use the lidar to perform the ortho rectification. Since lidar usually might give you a sharper surface model, so if you want to perform high quality uh, true ortho, you can directly use your lidar uh, DSM for the ortho rectification. So um, the lidar uh, the External DM can be uh, imported as a GeoTIFF file or as a NASCI, a NASCI grid file. Uh, or also recently we can import directly, if you're using LiDAR, let's say you can import your, uh, your LAS point cloud and Correlator 3D will directly convert your LiDAR point cloud uh, in, into a, a raster grid of cells. So if I show you how it looks, so basically here you have the uh, visual interface of Correlator 3D. And let's say if you want to 
bring an external DEM in Correlator 3D, uh, all, you, all you have to do is basically go into the DEM section. You can have the little plus button here and you can specify um, your, uh, your file that, uh, that uh, you want to import as an external DEM. So here you, we have all the uh, different uh, uh, format that we can ingest in uh, Correlator 3D. You've seen that we have uh, the SMF2 uh, format, which is our own proprietary format. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a format that we've developed for much more faster processing. So if you have to, to do some, uh, some manual editing uh, directly uh, onto your uh, digital terrain or surface model, uh, we suggest to store your um, your elevation data into uh, the same active model files, uh, and it will be much more quicker for the um, for the uh, edition. And also, we can keep uh, track of all the edition you have done uh, on your uh, on your um, surface or terrain model. Uh, let's say if you have a lidar point cloud and you want to directly import. Uh, your LAS file uh, within Correlator 3D, you can go into file and then import them LiDAR last file. So you can directly select your, la your, your last point cloud. Then the software will uh, take the point cloud and translate the point cloud uh, into a digital surface model that you will be able to use directly for your aerial triangulation and tie your uh, input imagery to your LiDAR uh, DSM. If you, have, if you want to have a bit more of information about that topic, I suggest uh, you go take a look at a webinar we did on how to merge LiDAR, point cloud, and uh, photogrammetric data with Correlator 3D. That is, our, is available on our website. So now, generating a mosaic from individual ortho. So basically, uh, the generation of a mosaic is basically a two-step process. Uh, so the first step will be the ortho rectification. So the ortho rectification is basically we're going to correct for uh, the, geom the geometric deformation that we have pre previously talked. Uh, and then the mosaic creation is we're going to take each individual ortho photos and generate a seamless and color balanced mosaic uh, for, uh, for as, as of a mapping product. So you can use your, your uh, ortho photo mosaic. Uh, in um, in the mapping software, if you want to perform uh, further analysis uh, on your outputs, so um, so let me show you how it works. So basically, uh, you have here uh, on on the top of your screen, you have the different modules. So we have the AT module, the DM extraction module, and then we have the uh, ortho uh, the ortho rectification module and uh, the mosaic creation uh, module. So, um, so the ortho rectification module here. Uh, first of all, you'll need to select uh, what type of terrain uh, of terrain information you want to use to correct for the uh, topographic correction. So you can use either a, a terrain model or a surface model. If you want to do a true ortho, you will need to select first of all your your surface model. Then it will be displayed on the screen, and then you can uh, you can. Uh, you can uh, select your different parameters for the ortho rectification. So first of all, you can you can uh, select the DSM based approach if you want to have some a true ortho. Uh, also, as an output resolution, the software will uh, will use the native resolution uh, of the uh, input raw imagery. So it's going to be one time the ground sample distance of um, of the uh, of the uh, imagery. So as a result, the software will uh, auto rectify each individual images. And as you can see here, they're going to be overlaid one, one over the other one. Uh, but there's no color balancing that is done yet because we can see uh, those many, um, those different orthos just overlay over our, uh, in this case, it was performed on the terrain, uh, on the terrain model. Uh, then, if you want to, if you want to create uh, an ortho mosaic, you can take all those uh, individual orthos and merge them into one single file, uh, in order to have, uh, in order to have uh, a seamless mosaic, like this. So a seamless uh, mosaic, which uh, the seam lines are uh, are adjusted, and also the color balance is done throughout throughout your project. 
So if you want to perform uh, an orthophoto creation, an ortho mosaic creation, you can have here the, the different options. So we we can perform, uh, as I said here, color the color balance throughout your uh, throughout your project. Um, also, uh, we can perform the nadir optimization. So if you have uh, if you have a lot of overlap and you want to really use the, the the most nadir part of your uh, input imagery, we can select the nadir optimization. And the software will only use uh, the the most nadir part of each individual images. So uh, the so it's going to be kind of a true ortho, but done on the on the on the on the terrain uh, on the terrain uh, model. Um, so, uh, also another great features with Correlator 3D is that you can at any time disable and re-able different images if you only if you only want to generate a subset uh, section of your project. So in this case, I have a really small project which is basically five flight lines. But let's say if I would like to generate only uh, a mosaic for the two first flight line, and I will I would like to remove. Uh, the three uh, last flight lines. So what I can do is I can go into my project tree and then select a d all, uh, select different flight lines. So I can just either just uh, unselect them here. This will only uh, only be visual, so the, the the image will still be used for processing. But uh, if I hover over the flight line names, I can have the disable flight line, which gonna gray out the flight line. So those images won't be taking out uh, into account if I launch a DSM generation or an auto creation module. So let's say uh, if I only want to have those two flight lines, what I can do is I can then disable, uh, let's say the first three flight lines and the, the auto or the DSM will only be generated for this uh, for this section, so it's, it can be quickly uh, a way to um, to uh, to generate smaller section uh, to test out some different parameters uh, for your uh, for your project. Also, uh, this disable option can be uh, used for individual images as well. So you can uh, you can you can go into the different images. And then disable uh, those uh, those different images. The same principle can also be applied during the mosaic creation. So let's say you've done your DSM generation, everything is good, but you maybe have one or two input images that are more uh, that are, are more uh, darker or um, than than all the rest, and they seems to be. Uh, causing maybe a little bit of color balancing. What you can do is you can go into your ortho folder uh, in your project tree, display your ortho, and then you can directly uh, enable uh, or disable the, a specific ortho that you don't want to take in account in your mosaic creation. So quickly, you can just disable them like this, or you can uh, use the, the shift button if you want to do uh, a multiple selection. Um, so this here, so those ortho that are grayed out won't be used for the um, for the uh, the ortho uh, the mosaic creation. Finally, another element that can be used during the ortho uh, the mosaic creation is some exclusion zone um, for the color balancing. Let's say sometimes on areas. Uh, like water, where you have uh, different uh, different reflectance uh, depending on uh, on the flight lines you're you're, you're looking at. Uh, when the when the mosaic is create uh, is created, um, basically uh, the software the software will um, will uh, create seam lines and will spread out uh, sample points all around your mosaic. So sometimes if you have sample points that, that are located into an area where uh, the reflectance is really different from, uh, from, from an area, uh, what you can do is during the mosaic creation, you can, uh, you can specify an exclusion zone so the software won't use any sample points uh, to do the color balancing uh, included in your um, in your shape file.
So now, uh, again, let's talk about performing reflectance calibration. So uh, since the beginning of the summer, we've launched out our, our latest version of Correlator 3D, which allows the, the calibration of the reflectance for multispectral project. So um, I will quickly overview uh, the possibility of the reflectance calibration. So the reflectance calibration is basically taking into account the sun and the lightning condition uh, during the acquisition and transpose um, those uh, corrections to the uh, output mosaic. So uh, you can compare your data set over time if you want to perform, uh, let's say, different um, different measurements so for crop analysis. So it's mostly for agriculture or other specific um, sector that will use multiple wavelengths. But basically, uh, for people that are using a uh, multispectral data set, uh, which can include uh, a, sun, a sun sensor, which is going to take into account the position of the sun where the, when the images is, is taking, and also the calibration, uh, the calibration panel for the reflectance, uh, the specific reflectance value of the, of the camera. You can include both sources during uh, the, um, the Ortho, the ortho photos generation. So you can do your AT, your DEM extraction, and then you can you can tag your different uh, your different different reflectance panel at the begin one of the beginning and one at the end of your flight, and then when you're gonna generate uh, when you're gonna generate the uh, the individual uh, image ortho photos, you can choose. Uh, between the, the 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 calibration panel and the sun sensor, a good practice would be to use both of them uh, during the um, during the uh, the ortho rectification to have uh, as much uh, as best as possible the reflectance value. Uh, if you want to perform, let's say, vegetation uh, analysis, uh, or if you want to compare data set over time uh, for uh, for agriculture management. Then once you, once your mosaic uh, is generated and you want to quickly assess uh, your mosaic accuracy, well, what elements you can you need to take a look at if you want to if you want to make sure that your mosaic uh, is uh, is highly accurate. So first of all, you can look uh, at your ground uh, your ground control point. So you can pan uh, into your uh, into your mosaic to to make sure that uh, your ground control points fit with the mosaic that was generated. So usually when you have a good uh, aerial triangulation report and your uh, AT fits with your ground control points, your ground control points should fit uh, with your final, your final mosaic. However, if maybe there's some error uh, into the, uh, the surface model that is used or the terrain model that is used, you can have sometimes a slightly, uh, a slightly um, displacement between the real position of the GCPs and the mosaic creation. So a good way uh, a good way to uh, to ensure that your uh, your mosaic is highly accurate is you can basically pan into your mosaic to make sure that here your GCPs uh, really fall uh, into the middle of where of where they should be. Like in this case, uh, we have some small uh, some small uh, uh, target that was that, that were laid on the ground uh, during the uh, the acquisition. So I can quickly uh, I can quickly pan. Uh, into my mosaic, just to see uh, if everything if everything uh, is uh, well according to the uh, to the ground control points. Uh, another element uh, which is a bit more subjective, but is uh, how to take an account the radiometric accuracy of your mosaic. So what you can do is you can you can pan uh, into your mosaic just to make sure that there's no apparent seam lines. Uh, that are visible. Um, there's no uh, images that may uh, contrast too much the final output. So, uh, so as I said, this is this is a much more a subjective uh, approach, but is a good way to see, to to make sure that uh, your final mosaic is uh, is good for uh, for the mapping product you want to uh, you want to deliver. Uh, let's say if you're panning into your mosaic and you see maybe uh, a few elements that you want to correct, well, Correlator truly really has a powerful uh, mosaic edition module, which allows you to edit the seam line of your mosaic. So um, 
So when the mosaic is created, uh, internally correlator 3D will generate some seam lines of the separation between each individual images and will store uh, all this uh, polygon information uh, into its internal structure. So if you want to edit uh, your, um, your seam line, you can go into the uh, mosaic edition modules. And then for a smaller project like I have here, you may have only one block of mosaic, but sometimes if you're managing a really large data set, you might have uh, more than one, uh, more than one uh, block, depending on the number of images that you have. So I, I can select the block of my mosaic, and then I can display quickly the, um, the uh, different seam line, the different seam line. So uh, if I want to quickly edit one seam line, what I can do is I can, I can let's say, select a seam line around here, and then I can use different tools to, uh, to, edit, uh, let's say to edit like this. So we can see quickly uh, that there's a displacement uh, between, uh, between two consecutive ortho. So uh, if I want, I can quickly adjust those seam line like this. Also, other elements that can be done is you can apply a, a different uh, feather size for each individual seam line. So let's say uh, you, have, you found that uh, the feather size that you've created your mosaic, so the, the buffering that we're going to use for the different, uh, for the seam line uh, tracing is good for most of your project, but maybe at, at, war, at one or two places you have a small ghosting effect. You can select those seam lines and adjust the feathering size uh, accordingly. So if you're working usually in, a, in an urban environment, maybe you want to use a feathering side that's much more uh, that's much more lower, so around 20, uh, because uh, you have sharper transition between your different images. On the other hand, if you're working on the, on an area where it's mostly homogeneous uh, textures, let's say like a field, uh, you can use a larger feathering size, which is going to have a, a larger effect around the seam lines to to to, uh, to color balance uh, the transition between two different ortho. Uh, usually uh, the 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 37 pixel is uh, the normal uh, parameters that we use for most of our project and usually and seems to work in many many uh, cases. Uh, one thing with the seam line editing is uh, since the seam lines are created uh, during the mosaic uh, during the mosaic uh, creation uh, during the mosaic creation process there's no way to import your own seam line because uh, correlator 3d uses own topology to 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 store uh, the features or the uh, information of each individual in, individual polygons however if you want you can export uh, those seam lines uh, as a as a, a shape file format so you can use um, you can use uh, directly the um, the uh, the export here and uh, store it as a S3 shape file uh, if you want to use them later on, or if you want to keep track of the uh, of the output uh, same line. Then another element that you can look at, uh, when you're you're editing your mosaic is basically the 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 overall uh, radiometric. Uh, assessment of your uh, of your mosaic. If you see that your mosaic is too bright or too dark, you can edit uh, the uh, the um, the final um, the final radiometry of your mosaic. So you can you can open uh, here the color adjustment, and then uh, you can you can uh, you can have here an histogram. So an occurrence. Uh, so each value what is what is is occurrence. So uh, as much as possible, when you edit your um, your histogram, you want to have as much as uh, as much as possible a normal distribution. So you want to have uh, an histogram that is well uh, well centered uh, into the, into the middle in, into the middle. So maybe something like this. And again, here I see that uh, there's there's quite a lot of value that 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 tends to be uh, around zero and and maybe up. Uh, instead of less around uh, the 255. So here, uh, between 0 and 255 means that uh, our images is stored into an 8-bit format. Uh, if it was in 16-bit, well, that those values would, would, would change. But if you want to stretch out your histogram, 
you can use those little brackets so i can i can use the bracket if i want if i want here uh to to um to change the contrast uh the contrast of this of this uh, final the final histogram so basically uh, the the gamma the brightness will be adjusted with the gamma and the contrast uh, of your final uh, of your final mosaic uh, will be uh, adjusted with the um, with the little uh, little bracket here so again if you want to have maybe this is a bit more subjective but if you have if you want to have a good output mosaic uh, what you can what you can do is maybe adjust the gamma first and then make sure that you have a nice normal distribution uh, where your um, where your mosaic uh, maybe stands uh, in the middle of your uh, of your uh, of your box here and there's no there's there's not too much value that are laying around the zero or the 255 uh, or the 255 uh, you can also directly preview uh, so before and after so as long as uh, you have not clicked on process there's nothing that has been saved on your final mosaic so the it's it's quickly just a visual effect once you've clicked on process uh, this is um, is a, a the changes are stored onto your mosaic. So if you wanna if you wanna have a backup, maybe do a um, do a a backup of your of your mosaic folder, which I, I will explain uh, in a few moments. Uh, also, if you wanna play with different bands, if you maybe think that there's too much red or green uh, into your final mosaic, uh, what you can do is you can you can also edit a different band band per band. Uh, to have as much as possible uh, the best uh, output the, the best output so um, so again the this color adjustment is really powerful if you want to get uh, if you want to get a good looking mosaic to provide to your to your customers So now that we've talked about the seamline editing and the, the final radiometry uh, of this uh, of the um, of the images, let's jump to how to manage multiple sets of ortho or mosaic. So basically, um, why would you why would you manage multiple sets of ortho or mosaic? So you're not sure if you need to perform a DTM based approach or a true ortho, and you want to compare between uh, both sets. Uh, before uh, before taking your decision, so with Correlator 3D, there's a quick way to uh, to um, to generate a both set of mosaic. So when uh, the orthos are created, uh, you will see uh, into your uh, project tree your uh, your ortho folder. So here uh, in your project tree, you have your ortho section, which here point out to a specific uh, folder. So when I perform the ortho rectification, my uh, ortho photos are stored as a location here, which is uh, in the in a C uh, in the C on my C drive. If I want to perform, let's say I've done I've done one set on my uh, on my uh, DTM, and I want to perform another set on my uh, DSM to see what what can I get with the true ortho. All I have to do here is I could just uh, click on the on the plus button and i can change the directory this way when i will uh, when i will produce the second batch of ortho it will not overwrite uh, it will not overwrite the uh, the previous ortho that i have generated so if you have an ortho folder here that already contains some ortho photos and you relaunch an ortho photo process well uh, the software will overwrite uh, what you already have into your folder so uh, a quick way can be here to uh, to select a folder uh, in this way, uh, where you can you can let's say call it uh, here uh, Orto DSM, and you can store uh, you can store those uh, Orto in this uh, within within this folder. So uh, you'll have one folder with the DTM Orto, one folder with the DSM Orto. And also, this applies to the mosaic folder. So, same thing. If you want to see the difference between a, a, a true a true ortho mosaic and a true ortho um, on the DTM base, uh, a DTM base uh, mosaic, you can you can change uh, the mosaic location uh, of your folder. So, uh, so you can you can just uh, change the little plus button here, and this again. Uh, the same line will be stored into your new folder if you're if you're uh, selecting a new folder 
Uh, another element that can be useful, let's say you have you already have some ortho photos that were generated into a third party software and you only want to generate quickly uh, a mosaic. What you can do is you can uh, you'll need to you'll need to use a tool uh, that is uh, installed into our uh, uh, into our tool uh, folder in the in the um, the installation folder, which is called Ori list bat, and then you'll take this tool, you'll place it into your uh, into your uh, into your fo your folder uh, where that contains the ortho, and then you'll be able to um, to here uh, change the uh, ortho folders to your uh, folder where your external ortho ortos are 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 stored, and you can then uh, directly generate your uh, your mosaic with the uh, with your uh, external ortho. So now uh, we've done the same line of the thing. We've done the radiometric accuracy, um, and we're really we're, we're ready to deliver our final product to our uh, to our customers. So let's see how you can manage uh, your mosaic uh, exportation within Corelator Tree. So there's different ways to export um, to export your final output. Uh, and what are the options? So sometimes, if you're processing a really large project, it's maybe not a good idea to own to only export uh, one big mosaic because because it can be heavy and quite uh, hard to handle into a GIS software. So you maybe want to use a tiling scheme uh, to to tile your final mosaic. So uh, in your mosaic uh, in your mosaic creation module and your mosaic editing module, sorry, we have the um, the export mosaic options which uh, will ask you to, to select an output folder where you want to store your, your, uh, your project, um, your final mosaic. Uh, this way, the mosaic will be stored uh, as a GeoTIFF file, uh, or you can create a TFW file if you, uh, if you, wanna, if you need them for, uh, the final, uh, for the final mosaic. Also, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you want to have a smaller, uh, smaller output on disk uh, because you're, uh, you have a limited amount of space. You can also add the JPEG compression uh, into your final output, so you can use them. So it's gonna it's gonna reduce the size of the of the final output. Um, if you only want to export a certain a certain uh, part of the mosaic, you can use uh, a shape file as a crop area. And again, uh, if you're managing, let's say, a large project, you can use a tiling scheme. Uh, a tiling scheme. Uh, such a shape file or uh, to, to to tile your mosaic. The only important thing is if you're using a, sh a shape file uh, like a, a fishnet to, to 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 tile your mosaic, it needs to have an attribute that's called name, which will give the name to the final uh, to the final tile. So let's say the name will be the 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 naming of the of the mosaic, and you will have your different uh, your different uh, tiles of mosaic. Another another quick uh, quick uh, tiling option that you can have is maybe if you want to use a, a fixed scale. So you can use uh, based on the pixel amount you need. You can use uh, the pixel size, um, the pixel size, and the mosaic name that you want to give to your um, to your uh, to your mosaic. Uh, if you want, you can also use uh, let's say a, a single TIFF a single uh, GeoTIFF file. And it's gonna like for smaller project like this. This is perfectly suitable. So you're gonna have one single file with your output, uh, with your output um, output mosaic. Finally, uh, the last topic of my of my uh, webinar today will be exporting NDVI maps and multispectral mosaic. So basically. For people that are working with uh, with multispectral data sets uh, that have more than uh, than three bands, so you have uh, you have uh, spectral bands that are in the in the non-visible wavelengths, such as the near infrared or the red edge. Uh, well, um, there's there's the options to import to export uh, vegetation uh, indices. 
So uh, what is basically the NDVI? So the NDVI is a, ratio, is a ratio between the red and the near infrared because the vegetation is highly absorbed uh, into the red wavelength, but highly reflected into the, uh, into the near infrared wavelength. So it's going to give you a ratio between those two bands and quickly show you uh, the healthiness of your vegetation. So you can see uh, healthy versus non-healthy areas in your uh, in your uh in your field. So um, if you if you want to have more information about um, about uh, the uh, use of multispectral data sets, we also have a, a one um, webinar that is on our website uh, that only focus on the multispectral data set. But if you want to again create uh, NDVIs or other vegetation indices, everything can be done uh, during the mosaic export exportation. So we're gonna have here the mosaic type, you can select the index. And basically uh, here, you're gonna have a, a kind of a uh, an index calculator. So you can you can directly type in your formula. In this case, it's basically the NDVI, the NDVI formula. And you can assign which bands uh, specify to the near infrared and which bands specify to the red. Uh, but we also have a, a different types of uh, of indices and also custom indices. So you can let's say type uh, type in uh, A plus B if you only want to if you want to only do a ratio between two bands or uh, an addition. So you can you can then uh, select what band correspond to what and then store this uh, as a floating point. So it's going to be stored uh, as a 32 bit float raster, or you can use a, a color map. Uh, but usually, I prefer personally the floating option, such so as more representative of the end of a, a typical NDVI NDVI maps. And then into a GIS software, you can apply the own uh, symbology that you want if uh, regarding the outputs uh, that that you have. So again, here, just a few reminders about uh, Correlator 3D and its unique benefits. So we have an unmatched processing speed, so we can process really large data set uh, in a quick matter of time. Uh, also, no training is required because we have different types of processing solution with, uh, let's say, with our automated workflow, which is a one button click solution. But also we have um, we have options for a really advanced user if, you want, if they want to play out with all those parameters. We can process unlimited numbers of images on a single standard PC. And also, uh, everything can be batched, uh, let's say with cloud integration, if you want to use AWS or Azure, or everything can be running out without even launching the graphical user interface. So just quickly, by running into command line, you can launch your script and process all your data uh, in a quickly matter of time. We also offer flexible options uh, and flexible pricing. So we offer the monthly, the yearly, the permanent uh, options. We also have different types of license. We have UAV license, medium format, satellite format license, and a full format license. We also offer a no luck or floating uh, license, depending on your needs. So again, if you want to have uh, quickly uh, a free a free pressing for marketing uh, for marketing, feel free to write us at sales@samactive.com. Also, we offer free trial of Correlator Treaty on our website www.samactive.com. Mm -hmm.